Baby. Look what I grew. What the f is that? I don't know. <laughs> hey guys, it's been a minute. <laughs> and the garden has grown so much in the week that we were gone. So this past week, we, well, not the whole week, we were gone about five, five, six days, five days? Six days. <laughs> um, we went on a hunt in Timbron, New Mexico. Both Chase and I had a deer hunt and then we had also last minute grabbed a turkey tag because we remember we saw turkeys up there. And we both tagged out, which means we both were able to harvest a deer and a turkey. So we had an amazing time out hunting. We came home with a ton of healthy wild caught food and we are still working on it. My face is, uh, if you can see, it's pretty wind burned. My lips are super chapped from riding around in the mountains on the ATV. <laughs> it's cold up there. So I apologize for my appearance, but I have so many cool things to show you in the garden. Being away from the garden for like a significant amount of time is always super awesome because you come back and it's like seeing a brand new garden. <laughs> take a look at this giant broccoli head and all of these broccolis have developed pretty large heads since I've been gone and I really wanted to wait until today to harvest there was this massive broccoli head and I'll show you a picture of it I had to cut it off because I was a little bit worried that it was going to start to go to flower because it was so large so I didn't get to harvest that with you guys yesterday, but I am going to get some turnips today and I think it's time for one of my cabbages to come out. But this was the broccoli I harvested yesterday. I just cut it off, here's the base. And I'm not going to pull this plant out because it will continue to produce little offshoots, like little tiny broccoli florets, kind of like broccolini over the course of the winter. If I needed the space, I would pull that plant out because honestly, the, the little side shoots of broccoli um, that a heading broccoli like that puts out aren't very much. If you had a ton of broccoli plants, then yeah, you could make several large bunches with the tiny little florets that come out after your main harvest. But I don't have anything besides onions that I need to do with my winter garden right now. So I'll just leave that plant in there. And then, you know, if I ever need some broccoli greens, you can absolutely eat the leaves of a broccoli plant. But they're a great substitute for greens in the winter if you don't happen to be growing any kale or lettuces or anything like that. So I'll just leave the plant in there. I'm not worried about it. And I don't think I'll be starting any more seeds going into December. It's just gonna be getting too cold. And the seeds that I already have planted, like those little rutabagas, uh, they've already been damaged by frost. So here are my little rutabaga sprouts. You could see with this guy, he's all wrinkly at the edges. It definitely got a little too cold for these guys in such a young stage of their lives. And they're not necessarily dead. Um, they may be damaged so much that they won't grow anymore. I'm not sure yet. Not all of them got damaged, but it's just getting too cold at night for really young plants to thrive. But no fear, because I have tons of food left to harvest over the course of the winter this year. And I'm so excited to show you this, guys. My first pea flower made an appearance this morning. So maybe I'll get a pea this winter. Maybe just one, <laughs> who knows? But these plants look really good. Look how healthy and vibrant they are. And now that they're more established because I put them in earlier this year, uh, they're not taking the frost as badly as they usually do. Overall, 10 out of 10 doing better than any other year. But I was checking out some of these turnip plants, which are getting pretty large. And I've got a few that are heading up like this, but he's not totally ready yet. I think I'm going to pull at least one turnip today. And I think it's gonna be this guy because I have no idea what it is. <laughs> But I only have, I, I thought I only had one variety of turnips that I planted was, it was the purple top turnip, the standard turnip variety. Um, but this guy doesn't have a purple top. So I just kind of want to pull him up and see what it tastes like. Um, 
because there's a few in here that don't have the purple tops and they're just like all white. Now I did grow albino beets, um, but these are not beet leaves. So I have no idea what it is. That's why we're gonna pull it up today so I can eat it and see what I'm growing, because I don't know. <laughs> and I could probably let this guy get a little bit bigger, um, but I'm just so excited to be harvesting something from the garden right now. Oh my word. Oh my <laughs> Oh my, what is this? <laughs> what did I grow? <laughs> I don't think this is a turnip. Yeah, I have no idea what this is. Um, this is so long. This is more than a foot long. <laughs> I'm so, I'm sorry, guy. I don't. I'm gonna have to look at my seed packets. What on earth is this? <laughs> this like looks like a parsnip. Isn't this what parsnips look like? Or I don't have parsnip seeds. I have no idea what this is. Oh my goodness. There's the giant hole it came out of. That goes so deep. See, I have another one right here. Um, well, I was not, I was not expecting this. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna harvest one now that I know how ginormous this is. I kind of want to see how big the rest will get. So I know this for sure is a turnip. This is more globe shaped. It has the purple top. I think my root vegetable bed is just completely unknowable right now. I threw so many seeds in here because the bed got damaged so many times. I don't know what I've done. <laughs> it's like a grab bag of goodies. It's always a surprise. Well, I guess we're taking that in. We'll keep you right here, whatever you are. And we'll need these guys for my cabbage. And my cabbage is looking really worse for wear, y'all. I've got a ton of cabbage worms in here that I've been picking off by hand. Um, but they have gotten the best of some of these. Look at this, it's just completely riddled. But one good head that I have is right here. And it's pretty solid. I think I'm just gonna harvest this guy today and see how it turns out. Harvesting cabbage is kind of preferential depending on what you're using it for or how you like it. Um, if you want a longer storing cabbage, you wanna buy a variety that's longer storing and they're just gonna have really tight, dense heads. Meaning, cause in a cabbage, all of the leaves wrap over each other over and over and over again and that's what makes the cabbage head that you eat it's essentially just a bunch of leaves but the quicker varieties like this one the early jersey wakefield they're looser wrapped heads so there's more of an air space in between each cabbage leaf so these when you squeeze them are not going to be like rock hard and super dense i could absolutely harvest these cabbage heads when they're still super squishy they've got a ton of space in between the leaves they don't have a lot of leaves or I can wait until they're super, um, not super, but more dense than usual. These types are not good storage cabbages because they grow with more looseness in mind. They don't develop really, really tight, super densely packed heads. So I'm not looking for that in this anyways. But I don't also want to harvest a really small cabbage. I want to give it a lot of time to grow a lot of leaves and develop as big a head as possible. This guy is the best looking cabbage head. And even here I can see there's absolutely some cabbage worm damage on this. I'm not sure he's gonna be super viable for me in terms of how much edible mass I have to eat. Not to mention, he's going to have to do a fair bit of soaking in some salt water um, to make sure I'm not cutting up a cabbage worm with my cabbage. That would be so gross. 
You can see the telltale sign of cabbage worms in here. See that brown stuff? It's it's more of a greenish brown. The camera's just not picking it up. It's worm poop. This is worm poop. And it's everywhere here at the bottom because they eat around the leaves here and then they poop and it just falls down into the base of the plant. And with a cabbage plant, um, if you cut off its head, like the broccoli, like I cut off the broccoli head, it's going to produce me more shoots of, of little tiny broccoli florets. That's not going to happen with cabbage. Um, so I could try and get it as close to the base as possible and cut off a nice little head, or I could just take out the plant. I'm probably going to leave the plant itself and try and just get the head out because I have nothing else to cover this soil with. And I want to make sure this soil area stays covered once the plant is harvested because I don't need it to get excessively dried out or just lay bare for the entire season. So we're going to cut this head out and the cabbage isn't going to do anything. It'll live, I'm sure, when I cut the head off, but it's not going to grow me another cabbage head. I really don't want to accidentally cut a worm in half while I do that. It's gross. There's so much worm poop on here. It's pretty gross. <laughs> here it is. Early Jersey Wakefield cabbage, which I'm going to soak thoroughly. Um, because there is bound to be a worm up in here somewhere. There's one on my leg. <laughs> I'm right there. My little guy. Get. Get out of here. Take this, put it next to my parsnip looking guy. I've never eaten a parsnip. Um, I, I know what they look like. I've never eaten one, so I'm not even sure I would know if that was a parsnip, if I ate it. <laughs> I'm gonna absolutely have to go back in and look at my seeds. Of course, I will likely do that after y'all have already seen this, so I'm sure I will get plenty of comments down below about what it is I'm growing, because <laughs> I don't know. And over here in the other brassica bed, I have got some awesome cauliflower coming up. Look at that. It's getting pretty large. It's about the size of a softball, I would say, right now. And these wrapper leaves, <laughs> I talked about on my last video, aren't really doing it for me. They're not covering it as much as I would like, especially because it's freezing at night. So I just took a, a leaf from another plant and just covered it like that. Which you can totally do, just take a leaf off of another plant and cover up your cauliflower that way if the way that it's being protected is not to your liking. <laughs> but we're still getting cold at night and I have in the past lost an entire crop of cauliflower from one too cold night. It's the whiteness just disappears and it becomes mush and brown and just makes it completely inedible. And it's a huge waste of, of months of work for this single head of cauliflower and it's just gone. So I do my best to protect the cauliflower at a minimum during the winter with our cold nights. I just realized I have cabbage worms on my Brussels sprouts too. See that dark poop in the corner there? That makes me a little angry. I need to find this guy and get him. I don't see him right now. You can see he's munched away all these leaves. The cabbage worms don't seem to touch the cauliflower heads. Um, yet, at least. But I've been trying to pick them off as much as possible. Obviously, I've been gone for a week. 
it's been a busy couple days. So we got back from the hunt and it was Wednesday evening that we got back. I had to drive down to my mom's house to pick up the dogs and then the next day was Thanksgiving. So we spent all morning cooking up some things to take. We ended up having to go to two different houses to do Thanksgiving. So that was a very long day and we were still very tired from the six days we spent <laughs> in the mountains. And then yesterday, which was the day after Thanksgiving, I had to work. <laughs> and I worked in the afternoon into the evening. And in the morning, we started processing one of the deers, uh, my deer. We cut up roasts and steaks and, and vacuum sealed them in bags. So it has been a very, very busy week. And today is a day off for me. We still have a ton of stuff to do, but we're gonna take it slow and easy and just relax and chill because I feel like that's not something that Chase or I have gotten to do since last Friday. <laughs> so we're very excited for a day off. Of course, he's not working all weekend, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Um, just the extraordinary amount of meat we have left to process kind of hangs over your head. <laughs> so, but I'm very, very thankful. Uh, I've never harvested a turkey before in the wild. I've never hunted them. This was my first year. This was also Chase's first year. So that was extremely exciting to get a turkey the day before Thanksgiving. We didn't, we didn't eat that turkey for Thanksgiving. We went to my mom's who had already cooked a turkey and then to Paige's who had also already cooked a turkey. So that will be a later date turkey that we have um, for our meal. But it was very, very fun. I had a blast and we have a ton of meat to be thankful for. I am not complaining about the work at all. I do like processing our deer ourselves though. It's just way cheaper. You save hundreds of dollars processing your own meat and we're not picky. I don't care about specific steaks or whatever. We know enough about cleaning and butchering our own meat that we know which cuts go better as roasts and which are fine as steaks. So we're okay with it. It's just, it's just a lot to do. And I'm running out of freezer space. I'm gonna take these bad boys inside and wash them up and take a slice of this and figure out what it is. And I do have footage from the hunt. Um, I know there were a couple requests in my comments to show footage. I got as much as I could. It's just, it's very difficult to be hiking vertical miles up a mountain you know, having a camera. I'm, I'm a one-man film crew <laughs> and in, I can't focus on just filming the experience without actually living the experience because the goal was to hunt. <laughs> so I did get a bit of footage and I need, a, I need to go through all of it and edit it. So that video won't be out immediately, but it will be out. I promise I've got some stuff. Thank you guys uh, for joining me on this garden harvest. <laughs> And I will catch you on the next one.